In the news this week, the voice can still happen. What's next for First Nations advocacy as legislative move to potentially come soon. An exclusive interview coming up. Into the second term, Basil Zemplis emerges victorious in the Lord Mayor race despite state political ambition dogging his campaign. A teenager has passed away following last week's juvenile detention incident at Unit 18. And later, Dr Andrew Miller's comment. This is The Evening News with Ivan Loon and Maliva Thorne. Good evening. Yes, 23 WA campaign manager Suresh Rajan stated that a voice to parliament can still happen very soon without constitutional entrenchment. In his first interview since the referendum defeat, Mr Rajan also gave his reaction after a majority of Australians voted no to the voice to parliament. He exclusively reveals what his next plans will be. Sharish, thanks for being here. Before we get into the details, may I ask you, what's your reaction to the referendum results? Mm. Look, disappointed in the result. Have had very, very many conversations with some of the, uh, the Aboriginal communities since that time. A lot of the calls I took on the night were very, very concerning. There were people who were feeling particularly um, felt like they were being ignored in the in the community in their land and a lot of our uh, indigenous brothers and sisters were ringing up and saying look they felt really this was a kick in the guts for them they felt really uncomfortable with it all uh, reaction generally was uh, that um, this really is a throwback to the the colonial days and the view that uh, this is a society based entirely on um, on non-indigenous folk, unfortunately, even though it is their land. Do you respect the voters' decision? Absolutely, absolutely. Look, it's their, their decision. Uh, they exercise their democratic right to make a decision. They based it on on matters that were uh, were, were appropriate for them. Uh, I would never ever question the right of someone to vote one way or the other and nothing's going to be achieved by actually attacking the no voters. All I would say is that we need to bring the no voters with us onto a voice that will actually be an advisory group to government. The voice can still happen but not entrenched in the constitution. How are we going to get there? Uh, I think it's simply a matter of uh, governments putting legislation in place. Uh, they have the capacity to go through uh, Parliament at the present time. They've got the majority. Labour has the majority. They can actually put in place a voice without having to go to the people, without having to go to the con uh, constitution change, and without having to have a referendum. Okay, so is reconciliation dead in Australia? I think that we should uh, still be, I, look, I certainly, as a, a, on a personal basis, I'll be pushing very hard to ensure that we still have a voice, uh, but not necessarily embedded in Parliament. We still have the concept of a voice, we have a creation of an advisory group, and we have important people from the, uh, the uh, Aboriginal communities right across the whole country to form that voice, but we don't entrench it in the Constitution. We simply have it as an advisory body to government, and that can be legislated. Given that you are the campaign manager for Yes23 in WA, may I ask you, what went wrong with the campaign? I think that uh, a lot of it was based around fear. There was a lot of stuff there with, that was being promoted by the no campaigners, and uh, a lot of it was around people who weren't willing to go and look for the details themselves. So what they were concerned about, what they started to say was that uh, really there was no detail. Uh, all of the detail was there, it was just a matter of them searching for it. We certainly engaged with n numbers of communities and engaged with talking to them and we found there was a high level of lack of knowledge about what this, uh, this whole thing was about. One of the things that we found was very evident was that, look, the concept of a referendum was very alien to a lot of people who have come from nations where it would be a totalitarian regime, it would be a government that simply imposes their will without actually going to the public to find out what it is that they want from the government. So the concept of a referendum was something that was completely alien to these people and they could not understand it. And because they didn't understand it, they just found that it was very appealing to say, if you don't know, vote no, because uh, they didn't know. And so they voted no. The Yes campaign's message didn't cut through in Western Australia. Do you accept responsibilities? 
I, I think uh, I think that um, we could certainly um, have started the campaign a lot earlier. We didn't get into the space right on uh, right up until the very end of it, and I think that um, we probably needed to spend more time in explaining the process rather than uh, going straight down to uh, going to the the emotional arguments as to why it is that people who were uh, the original uh, custodians of this land should be uh, listened to on matters that related to them. There was a real fear. We found that there was a real fear amongst people that this was giving a level of power to a group in the community that others didn't have. And that was what we found really hard to overcome, you know, because people who come here from other lands often come from places where governments have control over their daily lives. And they were concerned that this was giving governments more control over another group of people and it, it really was taking away their right to their own own decisions. And you can read the full story available now on the WIMN Extra News Club. Suresh Rajan, thanks for your time. Thanks, Ivan. Incumbent Perth Lord Mayor and WA media personality Basil Zemplis has won a second term, despite a high-profile campaign by his rival candidate and councillor Sandy Angie. Mr Zemplis's potential ambition for state politics also overshadowed his campaign, as pre-selection for the 2025 state election looms closer. After months of a high-profile campaign within the Perth city centre, the Lord Mayor election has concluded. Incumbent Lord Mayor media personality Basil Zemplis has emerged victorious on polling day, increasing his vote share from around 30% in 2020 to more than 50% this year with 3,264 votes. Despite a high-profile campaign, Lord Mayor candidate and outgoing councillor Sandy Angie secured 2,108 votes. The third candidate, Will Leyland, received 405 votes. He also missed out on being a councillor with 361 votes so far. Mr Zembler spoke to the media briefly after receiving news of his victory. Um, that the city is back on track and that our team has played a significant role in that. Um, recognition that we've worked very hard as a team for three years, uh, that we have restored the reputation of the city. Um, you all heard me say those things during the campaign. Ultimately those things that I say or any councillor says during a campaign gets judged. Uh, that's what elections are for. Sandy Angie, on the other hand, thanked voters and volunteers for their support and stated that a campaign was worth the effort. And I've had so many people reach out to me to assist and volunteer and I've met so many different people across the city and learnt so much more about our city so it's absolutely worth it. I've given it my best shot to be Lord Mayor and um, I, I've left no stone unturned. Will Leyland, meanwhile, stated that he will continue his political endeavours for the long run, describing his campaign as a wonderful journey. I think it's been a, a wonderful journey. It's been really rewarding. I feel like I've personally learned a lot. And regardless of the result, I'm very, very happy that I've run. In many ways, Basil Zemplis' victory is very important, according to Peter Kennedy's previous analysis on this programme. If Mr Zemplis is able to uh, win another term, this uh, makes an entree for him into state politics a very distinct possibility. Not only an entree into state politics for the Liberal Party, which badly needs talent in the state sphere, but uh, also possible leadership contender for the uh, Liberal Party sometime down the track. One of the major questions during the campaign was Mr Zemplis' future ambitions in state politics. When asked about the issue, he had this to say. I reckon I've spoken to a thousand individual ratepayers. Not one of them has said to me, Basil, are you staying for a whole term? Basil, are you going off somewhere else? Nobody's mentioned that to me. Why do you think that's the case? Because for them, it's not an issue. For them, they want a strong leader for the city of Perth. And if they've identified me as that strong leader, well, I'm really proud that I'll be judged on my record. Hi there. Are you looking for a new home? or want to refinance your car mortgage to get a better rate. At AA Finance Solutions, we have the expertise and knowledge to help you to find the right loan for your needs and budgets. Contact us today. Let us help you to make your home ownership dream a reality. AA Finance Solutions, your local mortgage broker. 
A teenager has died after last week's juvenile detention incident at Casuarinas Unit 18. The incident occurred at around 2 a.m. last Thursday when a First Nations juvenile detainee was found unresponsive in his cell. Prison officers initiated resuscitation efforts before paramedics arrived, successfully restoring the detainee's pulse. The teenager remained in critical condition for several days at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital before his family decided to switch off his life support machine. The opposition's corrective services spokesman Peter Collier stated the government needs to find new solutions. He also says it's time to close Unit 18. It's a wake-up call to us as a community that we cannot accept this. You know, this young man led a very, very complex and, dare I say, challenging life. We didn't make it any easier for him, we made it harder. And that's unacceptable. That is simply unacceptable that in 2023 we can just walk past that. We can speak how we feel, we can articulate those views, but fundamentally we haven't done anything about it. Unit 18 still exists. The WA branch of the Australian Nursing Federation has revealed that over 80% of members back the potential creation of a nursing and midwife-focused political party. The party would run at the next state election, which is to be held in 2025. The ANF poll, which was run internally, showed that 83% of the union's members who voted believed in the idea. According to the ANF, the poll also asked members about current political support for the health system. It showed that 57% of members felt no political party currently holds the best interests of the health system. On another note, almost 100%, 94 to be exact, of members believe issues currently being faced by the health system are not successfully being solved by the state government. It's clear that ANF members are hungry for change and action from their government and they feel they're not getting it. We see the state government has pulled out all the stops with the electoral donation laws which passed yesterday, which limits an, the amount an individual union can spend in an election period. This very conveniently timed legislation, which was promised before the 2017 election, was put through Parliament only weeks after the ANF showed any interest in running. This is a desperate attempt by the Attorney General to curb competition whilst the Labor Party still has the benefit of over a dozen unions throwing their money behind them. The Ellenbrook gunman has been arrested following this week's incident in the Vines. Authorities took swift action in Kiara, locating 28-year-old Blake Unkovich. Police stated that he was taken into custody without incident and is receiving medical attention for injuries he sustained before his arrest. The missing firearm, on the other hand, has not been recovered. On Wednesday, authorities received reports of a disturbance between a man and a woman known to each other at a property at Hotnet's Bend in The Vines. Police say initial reports suggest the man may be armed with a gun. Significant resources were deployed by local police, including Air Wing and the TRG squad. Upon attendance, officers located a woman inside a home and her welfare has been accounted for. Inquiries are ongoing as to the circumstances surrounding the incident. The latest written authority provisions to WA's firearm legislation aim to make Western Australians safer, lessen the unneeded gun ownership and hand back control to leaseholders and landowners. The property letter system, which allows for gun ownership on the grounds of vermin control, has been twisted from its original purpose, according to the state government. With the selling of written authorizations, and authorizations are often staying valid after selling a property, certain landowners have not been able to prevent unknown persons from firing guns on their property. The WA Premier Roger Cook stated that the current firearms property letter system has in fact been corrupted and exploited. Comments on the proposed changes are able to be given to the WA Police on their website until the 14th of November this year. And now here's Dr. Andrew Miller with his weekly medical and news commentary. Hi, thanks for your time. There's been a lot of uh, disturbing and potentially worrying things in the news recently. And I've been reflecting on the fact that people can get a bit down with all of this and tend to switch off and uh, become focused only on themselves when actually one of the best ways that we can combat the 
feeling that maybe it's all getting a bit too much is to do things for others and so in that spirit it was great to see the telethon on this weekend raising lots of money for sick kids and um, it's also perhaps time to think about what we can do for others and one of the things we can do is to be prepared uh, for an emergency situation by learning general first aid but also knowing CPR and I think it's time for us to reflect on whether we would be able to step up in an emergency to assist a family member or a friend or even a stranger. Would we know what to do if someone collapsed in front of us? And so it's uh, perhaps timely to think, have you done a course before? Would you have time to do one? Can it be arranged through work? I think that uh, if you ever find yourself in that situation, you'd be very glad uh, to know that uh, you had some skills and did what you could uh, for somebody at a time when they needed it, and you might even save a life. So instead of maybe giving in to the gloom and doom that's in the world around us, let's focus on what we can do for others. It's always a good way to look after ourselves as well. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Doctor. So the discussion continues in regards to The Voice. What do you think is going to happen next, Ivan? Well, speak about discussion next week, Ramda Sankara is very uh, keen to come on. Now, for those of you who watched this program for a while, Ramdas is the MSC WA, which is Multicultural Services Centre's WA's Executive Director. He has plenty to say about The Voice. And of course, we'll be bringing you that interview next week. And now here's Leo Padlisi with what's coming up on 6 News tonight. Thanks, guys. On 6 News, Israel to increase airstrikes as military forces prepare to enter Gaza on the ground. Palestinian authorities report the death toll rising. Also, thousands of people report tremors as a magnitude 5.0 earthquake on the Great Ocean Road is felt across Victoria and as far away as Tasmania. And China agrees to review tariffs on Australian wine ahead of Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's meeting with Xi Jinping in Beijing next month. We're on the hour every hour and here on 6 News. Watch live on our YouTube channel and our website, 6 For now, though, it's back to you. Thanks, Leo. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. We have the latest news on our website, wamnnews.com.au. Don't forget to subscribe to the WAMN Extra News Club so we can continue our work in the community. Full details on wamnnews.com.au forward slash news forward slash extra. From Ellie and myself, wish you good health, good night. See you next Sunday. Thanks for watching.